Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at marker removal paint techniques. I'm going to go over two very similar but slightly different techniques. Okay, so this is the plate we're going to be using. If you haven't been following along with this series, this plate is available for download. Just follow the link in the description. You can follow along exactly. Also, one other thing is in the previous video, we've made a corner pin, which matches the basic movement of this plate. We're going to be using this for this series. So if you don't know how to use a corner pin, go to that video and make that. Otherwise, um, let's get started. So I'm just going to make a duplicate of the plate, put it over here just for tidiness sake. Now the first step of most paint tasks is to find a good frame to treat as your clean frame and then focus on painting out the object on that one frame and then worry about applying it to all of the frames. So we're going to call that our clean frame or reference frame and what you're looking for in a clean frame is a uh, frame where you can clearly see the object you're trying to remove and there's minimal motion blur and it's unobstructed if possible. Um, so for this shot, pretty much any frame will work, but we want to pick one with no motion blur and I happen to know that frame 9 is a good one for this marker down here. So we're going we're gonna to focus on painting out this marker on a still frame and then we're going to apply it to the rest. So let's get started. The first technique I'm going to show is uh, without using any paint nodes whatsoever. It's just going to be taking this part of the plate and putting it over top of this part of the plate. So we're going to make a transform node and we're going to plug it into the plate. Now without looking at the transform node, I can grab this handle and holding control, I can move it over. Holding control will change this value as opposed to this value, which doesn't actually change the translation of the node. So it just moves this handle point around in frame. Now that we've got this here, I'm going to look at the plate again and I'm just going to take this area and now without holding control, I'm going to move this over top of the marker just like that. And so now it's, without holding control, it's changed this value. So now if I look at the transform, it's going to be moved over. So this is the original, this is the moved over version, original moved over. Okay, so now looking at the plate again, I want to make a mat for this marker here. So I'm going to create a rotor node. And I'm just going to draw around pretty close, but not touching the marker, just like this. And cool. I also want to feather this so it's a kind of a softer shape. I could use a blur node, but because I don't have much room here and I have more room here, I'm just going to grab these feather points just like this. And what this does, if I look at the node, um, by default it has a very sharp edge. I'm just kind of softening this edge out like that here. So. And what I'm doing there is toggling between the alpha channel. Um, I can actually make this visible in the RGB by turning it on up here. And so now toggling won't change anything. So I can just flip between these. Oh, it's a bit hard to grab these sometimes with a pen. Sometimes it doesn't register that I lift my pen up either. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. There we go. Okay. So now I want to take this and put it over this through this mat. So I can do this very simply using a key mix. Plug in the B into the background and the A into the transform and the mask into the roto. So if I look at this, ta-da, it's gone. Now it's not a very good patch because it's um, slightly in the wrong place. You can see this kind of middle grain line here not lining up. So I can take the transform node, I can Move it down a little bit, kind of align it up a bit better. Maybe see how far over I can go before we see that marker. Kind of like that. And one more thing is it's kind of a bit darker. This bit here seems to be darker than this bit here. So I can just put a grade node in and very subtly molt it up. Maybe use a tiny bit gamma as well very very subtly so the difference is before after cool so now we have a fairly decent um, clean patch we could refine this a little bit it's a bit darker over here than it is over here we could use a mat to grade this down but for the sake of painting this out this will be fine it's important to note that this patch only works on this one frame. If I play this through, you can see the roto shape and the offsets aren't going to line up anymore. 
So what we need to do is make a frame hold of this patch right here. So if I make a frame hold, set the first frame to frame nine and with an increment of zero, frame nine will be the frame for the entire range of the shot. It will never change from frame nine. So now we need to apply the motion of the plate to this patch and this roto shape. So we're gonna take the corner pin that we made in the previous video and we're gonna plug it into both the patch and the shape. And so now if I plug these in here like this, and if I play this through, you can see the patch and the shape is sticking to the plate quite nicely. It's actually bothering me this edge right here, so I can go back to the reference frame, zoom in a little bit, make that roto shape I mentioned using a rectangle. Like there, it's gonna make it nice and soft. So if I look at the shape, in the RGBA and there we go make a grade node looking at the final result and just want to bring the malt down Maybe less gamma, more malt. It's just smoothing out that gradient there. And one other thing to pay attention to is by default in most transform nodes, motion blur is off. So um, it's set to zero. So just to turn it on, we make this value a one and one essentially means on. We actually don't really need it on for the rotor shape, um, just for the, just for any color pixels that are there. Sometimes you'll need it on for the, for the mat, but in this case, probably not. Motion blue will make it a little bit slower when turned on, but it's um, definitely worthwhile. Or you could um, leave it off for the entirety of the comp and then turn it on right before rendering, but you just have to remember to do that. So there we go. A pretty tidy little paint without using any paint nodes. So the next technique I'm going to show is actually using a paint node. So it will be a pretty similar setup, um, but instead of using this transform offset thing, we're going to use a paint. I'm just going to make a dot here and another one over here. What I'm doing by this is bypassing the setup because it's a little bit slow here. So if I'm just looking at the original plate, um, nature will be a lot faster. So we're going to go over to our other marker here and we're going to do the same principle by making a clean frame. But we're going to pretend we can't just use this transform offset here so we can get a little bit more precise with the areas that we are selecting. So if I plug the BG in the roto shape to the plate, so I'm going to start with the clone brush. And if you're familiar with Photoshop or any sort of compositing software, really, you would have probably have seen the clone brush before. So if I click on it, it's going to give me one brush. If I control click and drag, it'll reveal the other part of the brush. So on the left is the sampling region and on the right is where it's going to put it. And if I hold shift and click and drag, it will make the brush bigger or smaller. And so I want to make sure I have very low hardness, maybe 0.1. And with the viewer looking at the paint node, I'm just going to start painting away, I'm trying to keep the lines in the plate that are there. This side might even be a little easier with the mouse sometimes. One thing I have noticed is Natron seems to um, always sample the original plate instead of the painted plate that we have done so far. So one solution for this is when you get close like this, you can make another paint node and use and, and paint on top of that version. Um, it's a little strange, most softwares don't quite behave like that, but oh well, Natron is free, and there we go. So we've painted out the marker, but again, this will only work on one frame. So any other frame, it comes right back. So let's put a frame hold under this again, set to frame 9. So I could copy this exact setup 
and just replace the patch uh, with this patch. But I'm going to kind of simplify and tidy up the setup a little bit. So we have our patch here. Um, we need this roto shape again. So we're going to make one that works for this marker. There we go. So now that we have this shape, what I want to do is put the alpha channel of this shape here into the RGB of this here. So we're going to do that using the shuffle node. Plug it in. And we're going to take the A pipe, the alpha channel of the image gets its color from the A pipe and the, the alpha channel from that pipe. So it's very easy to understand here. It's just A, 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 A pipe, alpha channel, easy. So now if I look at the shuffle node and the RGB, we have the color and in the alpha, we have the matte. So now what we can do is pre mold this, which we learned about in the previous video. And so now we have our patch. So if I just merge this straight over the plate, B pipe for background, A for over, you can see the patch works just fine. So this is the background and this is the merge. So all of this is still just a clean frame, except now we have it easily accessible to put one corner pin into it just like that. So instead of having to apply the corner pin here and here, we can merge these together and apply the corner pin just once. And I won't forget to turn motion blur on, looking at the merge node, close the properties, and I'll let this cache. So you can see the patch is working here nicely as well. The benefit to comping this way is it's really easy to move around. So I can just simply grab this dot and plug it into the key mix, move this all down, and now we've combined the two patches for the left and the right marker. As you can see, we've now removed both of these markers and successfully combined the two mini scripts. Um, one thing to bear in mind is Natron will often um, struggle with the paint node, at least for my, my computer. Um, so sometimes I get NANs and stuff and I just have to kind of keep refreshing the frame until they go away. But the technique works as you can see. And I've just um, rendered it out so I can cache it. It's a little bit heavy for some reason. Uh, it shouldn't be, it's a very small script, but I think Natron struggles with the paint nodes a little bit. So if at all possible, use the, the method we used on the left over the one on the right, but the one on the right can be a little more precise. So I hope you found that useful. That's kind of how mark removal and the basics of paint work in Natron. This technique is pretty standard across any compositing software. Obviously in layer based, it would be a little bit different how you implement that, but in Nuke, it's basically the same. I uh, hope you're finding these useful and thanks for watching. See you later. Great, that